video, I want to talk about vertical transformations. We've seen that when we perform addition or subtraction of a positive real number C on the outside of the function, the results are vertical changes to the graph. We call these translations. f of x and then plus C on the outside shifts the function up C units. f of x with a minus C on the outside shifts the function down C units. Likewise, multiplication to the outside of the function also produces vertical changes to the graph. So if we multiply on the outside by a constant c, this is going to stretch or compress the function vertically. If we multiply on the outside of the function by a negative, which is essentially a negative 1, then this reflects the graph vertically. In other words, it reflects the graph over the x-axis, so kind of like you're taking the page of a calendar and flipping it down. And we have two words we use for these kinds of movements to a graph. The translations are actually a subset of transformations, and translations are specifically moving the graph up, down, left, or right. The transformations include other types of movements like stretches, compressions, and reflections. So a translation is actually a type of transformation. We're just expanding our collection now. Let's take a look at a few examples and see what that means. So we're going to start with a function f of x equals the square root of, and then under the square root, x minus 1. The graph of this square root function is below. It has an endpoint at 1 comma 0 and it increases gradually from there, going through the points 2, 1, and 5, 2. We want to graph g of x equals 2 times f of x. Now the first thing we're going to do is actually find 2 times f of x. We've practiced already with doing algebra of functions, so we need to do 2 times the square root of x minus 1. Remember that the square root of x minus 1 is just that f of x that we're plugging in. And we want to see what that does to the graph. So let's move over to Desmos and check it out. Over in Desmos, I have the graph of f of x equals the square root of x minus 1. That's all under the square root. And I'm now going to include the graph of g of x equals 2 times the square root of x minus 1. In Desmos, I'm going to be drawing these as dashed graphs simply so you can tell them apart a little easier with the technology. Our graph of g of x is exactly twice as high as our graph of f of x. So for example, on the graph of f of x, we have a point at 2 comma 1. On the graph of g of x, we have a point at 2 comma 2. On the graph of f of x, we have a point at 5 comma 2. And on the graph of g of x, we have a point at 5 comma 4. Notice that the end point is exactly the same because the y value of 0 times 2 is still 0. The y value of 1 times 2 was 2. The y value of 2 times 2 was 4. So here is our function g of x. It's a square root function with the same end point but twice as high as f of x. I'd like you to try the next problem. f of x equals in parentheses x plus 2, and then out of the parentheses squared. You're going to find g of x equals 1 half of f of x, graph it, and describe the change. So pause this video and give that a try. And we're back. To find 1 half f of x, we're going to multiply the function f of x, that x plus 2 in parentheses squared, by 1 half. So that will be 1 half out in front, and then times parentheses x plus 2, close parentheses, squared. Let's move over to Desmos and take a look. x plus 2, the quantity squared, is a parabola with a vertex at negative 2 comma 0, um, opening up with points at negative 3 comma 1 and negative 1 comma 1. Let's now include the graph of g of x equals 1 half times the quantity x plus 2 squared. In this case, we see that every y value on the original graph of f of x is halved from its original value. 
For example, on the original graph, there was a point at 0, 4. And on the new graph of g of x, there's a point at 0, 2. So the y value has been exactly halved. Notice that on both graphs, we have the point negative 2, 0. Because when we multiply 0 by 1 half, we still get 0. Let's go back and sketch that graph. We'll still have the point negative 2, 0. g of x will have a point at 0, 2. And since f of x had a point at negative 4, 4, g of x will have a point at negative 4, 2. This should be sufficient to sketch a graph of the new parabola. Let's just stop for a second and reflect on what we've found. What effect did multiplying by 2 have on the graph of f of x? Well, when we multiplied by 2, we stretched the graph vertically by a factor of 2. What effect did multiplying by 1 half have on the graph of f of x? Well, when we multiplied the graph by 1 half, we compressed the values of f of x by a factor of 2. Or another way to say that is that we multiplied all of the y values of f of x by 1 half. Now notice in both cases we're actually saying this factor of 2 part, but the key difference between the two ways we phrase this is that in the first one we said we stretched the graph of f of x by a factor of 2, and in the second one we're saying that we compressed the graph of f of x by a factor of 2. So when we're stretching, we're moving further up and down as we move the graph. And when we compress, we're moving in towards the axis. So we're moving the original graph in towards this x-axis instead of away from the x-axis.